Okay, folks, tuning into my YouTube channel on my Nicaraguan boa, um, I want to share a person raised a uh, valid comment about uh, getting a snake, getting a Nicaraguan boa, and just wants to know, you know, kind of temperament and things, uh, and if they should uh, hook train or, you know, there's all kinds of different methods to do something. Uh, mine is just one way that I've done. I'm 52 years old and I've been, uh, you know, handling and raising uh, regular snakes, you know, since I was, you know, maybe eight years old. So, you know, 40, 40 plus years of, of doing this. Uh, you know, uh, if I had a, a a more dangerous snake, you know, like obviously, you know, an anaconda or a Burmese python or a reticulated python that was, you know, over 10, ten foot, uh, you know, definitely, you know, larger than that then I would use a much different technique or if I had a, uh, a green uh, tree bow or something with big, big teeth and, and wasn't very well handled uh, and, you know, temperament was, was up and down and then I definitely wouldn't just reach in and grab one of those. Um, so the Nicaraguan boa, uh, and I've had one, so I can't, can't express you know that I've had 20 of them and and you know 19 out of the 20 have been the same similar behavior but this guy is uh Manny Manuel uh, <laughs> I always laugh when I say that but uh he he's just very more even tempered and um, he does get amped up at times when he he like somehow knows when he sees me and it, it's not if I have a, a mouse in my hand he he can read my mind um, I mean, it's realistically, I mean, it's freaky. Um, and he knows when it's about time for, for him to be fed. And I can come in and I, like I said, I don't have a mouse, but he knows the, the mouse is outside the, his little closet here that I have him. It's outside in a little secondary container waiting for him to eat. So he knows that and he gets amped up. And, um, and so when he's amped up, there, there's going to be a, something a little different that you do. So let me just get into the video while I have you here and you're watching me and we're in here. I've got a little bit better light, but let me show you. This is his little terrarium setup. It's not very big because he, he's not very big. Um, I have a little plastic, uh, I don't know what they call this. It's, it's kind of more of a plastic little board instead of uh, paper and so it could get wet uh, but I put that on there to kind of uh, condense ven ventilation so there's uh, there's some ventilation here on the sides like right here and right here but it's not as big and the the, uh, the light hood takes up the rest so it tends to keep humidity in there a little bit better and right now uh, I just randomly keep his cage um, with a little portable heater in here in the closet year-round between about 85 and 90 it just just varies and then humidity right now is at 60 percent but it can be 60 60 to 75 percent uh, humidity and that's just because i have the coconut chips in here and uh and i keep that water down plus he has a water dish in there so just you know that's just fyi information but we just take this off and then i will take his hood off light hood and i just stick it up above and then um, I take his top off. I gotta remember what what uh, what terrarium this is. Um, Exoterra. Maybe I can't remember right now, but it's one of those brands. But this is a pretty secure top. I mean, this uh, terrarium was about a hundred and ten dollar terrarium, and I'm a budget seeker, so I had some coupons, and then. Uh, and then I saw some additional coupons and I went back and they honored the coupon. So I got this for like $35. Pretty good deal. But we to take the top off. And as you can see, he's not uh, inside the cage roaming around. He tends to, uh, during the day or when this uh, UVB light comes on, he goes in his hide. Um, and uh, he stays in here. So this is a little natural uh, wood piece of bark that falls off the trees here in North Texas. Uh, or if you cut logs and you, uh, with a chainsaw and then uh, some of these pieces fall off. So it was perfect. Um, you know, free. I love free. Take this off. And there he is coiled up. Put that over here. 
and uh, here he is right here but here he is he's coiled up he's not doing anything he wasn't surprised when I pulled the top off he's very easy going you know uh, I pull that top off and he's in there and all of a sudden his head starts what what what's going on what did you do you know then that's that's a that's worrisome you know because then if you reach down and grab him you know he might be scared but this Manny is very chill so you know you could come in and just touch him but he doesn't need to be touched and then you just come in and and I don't go at him from the front you know the snake's heads right here I never go at the front of his head where we're just I always come from behind his rear head and that's when I pick him up I just think that's a good philosophy don't come at a snake head first just come at him from the rear and if it if it's right here or if it's on the other side and then I just come in and then you know peacefully grab him gently and then I, I take him out and uh, he this may be an extraordinary super chill snake but uh, and you may not have that who knows I would think that um, if you're just gentle and you know and I'm speaking elevated for the camera uh, but you know just quiet and gentle and uh, and you get them maybe you know from a baby like I did you know uh, I got them from maybe a two uh, maybe three week old baby was very very small and then I just raised him so he's just very very cool and not aggressive and very deliberate moving but uh, other than that I mean if you have a more aggressive um, snake and you go in to the cage um, you I mean you can get something um, like uh, you know any kind of item that's in your room or your house and just uh, you know if he is he's snapping you know and following your hand you know like he is super aggressive and needing to be fed or he's or your snake is just aggressive anyways then you you try to get something to put some uh, a barrier between your hand and his head and there are times that I've done that when he knows he's going to get fed so, so me, he reads my mind and he know and then when I come in and lift that top off and then he is kind of jumpy and I'm not going to stick my hand in there and uh, and just get a free tag I mean I just don't like being snake but even though he's not big and it wouldn't do major damage I just don't like being bit on my hands um, then you can just get uh, any type of little barrier and just Put that down on top of his you know close to his head and then once you touch them um, they should calm down and once you know you just you touch them and let them know you know that they're going to be picked up um, I mean it's just my philosophy and how I've gone about this and uh, and it's worked out well so I'm not a professional herpetologist or anyone that uh, any you know super grand name but this is how I've done it for many 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 years and it's worked out so I'm happy with it okay thanks for viewing if you liked the video and found the content helpful you know just uh, slide down on the like button and hit that and uh, you know subscribe uh, I make just random videos on all kinds of things from motorcycles cars uh, knives reptiles e-bikes and um, and so you'll get a uh, uh, notice that I made a uh, boa video and if you're into boas or, or Nicaraguan boas then you might like my videos all right, bye-bye. Have a great day, great night, wherever you are, and catch me on the next video. Bye-bye.